Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography over to the next level. Now, this week we want to continue on answering a couple of questions because we had a couple of good questions the last couple of weeks, right? And they're very easy to be able to do. Matt Crace had said, the digital darkroom. He has a question, I'm not sure, but if you have something more, you have to tell me that. But I did like this, moving from a PC to a Mac. Right? So you're using a PC and you're using a Mac. What are the differences between the two? Right? Uh, the PCs are actually just better. That's all it is, really. Don't, I'm just kidding, totally kidding. So uh, PC or Mac, there's actually no difference between the two and you're gonna wind up finding out that there's only a couple of different things that you need to keep in mind, right? Number one, you don't have a right mouse click, right? You're used to a mouse and you have a right mouse click you don't have it anymore. So if I needed to do a right click in this one section here on my desktop, it's gonna be hard to do. But what you can do is inside of your system preferences, you can go over to your mouse, and if you have a mouse connected, you can set it up, you can go to your trackpad, and right here, you see how you have a secondary click? You can set that to be your right click. So at any point in time, if you need that, just do a right two button tap, and there's your right click. From there, you can also do the right click using the actual control button. It's the one that's all the way on the left. Click on that and hold it down. Now you can do a right click. This is special, right? When you're using Photoshop or Lightroom or anything that you do in photographic, you do use right clicks a lot for contextual menus. So knowing where that is, it's important. Other than that, PCs call the control, Macs call it the command. PCs call it alt, Macs call it option. That's it. There's nothing else more to it than that. Matter of fact, I could take my entire Lightroom catalog that sits on the PC, take the whole folder, move it over to the Mac, double click on it, and you can open it up without a problem. So you're gonna find that there's not gonna be that much of a transition between the two. The program works exactly the same between the two. The next question that we had came in through email. When shooting multiple images to merge together for a panorama, how important slash useful is it to use a normal lens as opposed to telephoto or a wide angle? Keep the camera very level. If it's rotated, rotate the camera around its nodal or parallax axis. Other than resolution, what's the difference between a stitch panoramic and a cropped wide angle image? Well, crop wide angle versus a panorama. Panorama is gonna be bigger, so you can do more stuff with it. Uh, whether or not you should use a wide angle versus a telephoto, in my opinion, I don't find that much of a difference between the two. I'm just gonna use the one that's more available to me. Uh, nodal changing versus rotation and things like that. A lot of the times, the only thing that you wanna keep in mind, and these are a couple of tips when you're working with panoramics, is don't tend to swivel the camera, right? Because that's gonna take the sensor and it's gonna move it from one side to the other. Instead, rotate kind of with your hips so that you sweep from one point to one point, but you're keeping kind of the camera sensor plane, right? So it's doing this instead of this, right? So that would be one tip that I would give you. The second thing that I would tell you for this is turn it vertically. If you turn it vertically and then you do the shots that you want this way, what'll happen is you're actually going to have more information. There's no standard when you're working with a panorama. You just wanna capture as much data as you can. So in here, I have a bunch of different pictures that I wanna show you for a panorama. So I'll go ahead and I'll go over here and there's my panoramic, there's one picture. Now, the reason that I wanted to show you this was because I wanted to show you that I really wasn't paying that much attention. While I do think that panoramics are important and panoramics are good and you should have good techniques with this, our software has come quite a long way in resolving this kind of stuff and working it for you. So here is LCAP, right? And then from here, take a look at where it is in the frame here. When I move down to the next one, that is a lot smaller. Right? This is a, in a different direction. There, it's not there at all, right? So there's four pictures, different sizes, right? All sorts of them. They include it, but on average, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep about 20% inside of the frame. Now, this looks weird though, because it's like it's small, it's big, it's small, it's big. I wonder how this picture right here is gonna look when we merge it. That's what we're gonna talk about when we come back from our break. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you go to the link in the description below. You can see the whole thing on how we do that inside of Photoshop, as well as how we do that now inside of Lightroom CC. My name is RC, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.